We live in a world that is made up of systems. Every day, we interact with multiple systems, like the food supply chain system, the education system, and the public transportation system. A system is a set of components and their interactions that forms a unified whole, exhibits its own pattern of behavior, and is described by its boundary and its purpose or function. In the global health and social impact sector, most of the systems we work in are complex. A complex system behaves in a non-linear, organic and adaptive way, which makes it very difficult to predict what will happen next. In these complex systems, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. You can't understand the whole system by simply examining its individual components. Systems mapping uses streamlined visualizations to demonstrate the interconnected pieces and see how they come together to form an intricate whole. This helps us to make sense of complex systems so that we can identify the best ways to intervene and achieve the desired results. There are different methodologies for creating systems maps that are useful in different contexts. Let's use systemigrams as an example. Defining the boundary of the system of interest is a critical first step. This helps to keep your analysis manageable. After that, you can start by working from secondary sources, but ideally, you will collect data directly from key stakeholders, live in and or working within the system of interest. When you analyze the data and visualize the many connections, you start to notice things like feedback loops, missing links, duplicated efforts, and misaligned incentives. For example, let's look at how systems mapping helped to identify these important elements within the Namibian health resource tracking system before and after a process of combining two parallel approaches. Once you've created the maps of the system, it's important to go through a process of validation with the stakeholders to ensure your interpretation of the system is accurate. The output after that validation might look something like this. There are many ways to use systems maps, for example, retrospectively, as a means of program evaluation and assessment, where you map out a system at two distinct points. Alternatively, you can use systems maps in a prospective way for program design. Beyond visualizing relationships, interactions, feedback loops and dependencies, Systems maps can help us identify existing leverage points. If you want to figure out how to create system-level change, identifying leverage points can highlight critical junctures, where changes can have a ripple effect across the system to achieve the desired result. Systems mapping gives us a holistic understanding of the system that allows us to see its strengths and weaknesses and identify the most adequate intervention areas. In summary, Systems mapping helps us visualize and better understand the ever-changing, nuanced environments in which we work, so that we can take a complexity-aware and adaptive approach to program design that supports system change.